divorced <laughs> and it's a dumb question. Are people divorced for that? Yes. Only. Uh. <laughs> and then they remarry. Ay 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 ay. Ay ay ay. Wait a minute. Because now the main reason to do that was to pay debt. They were in over their heads with debt. The clients that I have at least are coming to the realization that they need to be present. You know, at least for the for the children's mm. cases and all of that, they want to be in their children's lives. They want to be dads, yeah. so we give it to the tracing agent or whatever. And so the agents like that. Yes, there's someone right now who's tracing someone. Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope no one is tracing me. I hope so. <laughs> King King David Studio Podcast. Good evening. Good morning. Good morning. We never do that. Anyway, you know what we do on the on our podcast? We we invite guests whom we think uh, will leave us with knowledge, will leave us empowered. Uh, I've been liking this journey of ours where we talk the koloto, you know, uh, we're talking to people who are guiding us about how to raise our kids. Uh, but relationships always comes out to be quite a one that stands out. And 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 people are asking Ormari, that lawyer lady has she has she become a, uh, a relationship expert? Well, it turns out she deals with a lot of people who get divorced, and that's why she ends up having to have opinions on the subject. I can't believe I'm justifying this on her behalf. How are you, uh, <laughs> Medu Bazan? I'm well. How are you, Dr. Mashavel? I'm great. Um, can tell you, Saint Bazan. Everybody of Bazan tennis, check it out. Can our website tell how? www.dubazanatennis.co.za Don't miss it, please. Check out more for na kweza halang. I hear you. You had a few people call uh, asking for help. Quite a lot, actually. I was, I was overwhelmed. I didn't expect. Overwhelmed? That. I, That's yeah, a no, big word. It is. I didn't expect that at all. Some wanting marriage counseling. Some wanting relationship counseling. Others obviously wanting divorce. Others wanting assistance with um, children-related matters yeah. and all of that, which forced me to not force, but I was already in talks with this. This wonderful lady, um, Rushka Lee Pedro, she is okay. a, a life coach mm. and a relationship uh, coach, you know, yes. and all of those yes. things. And then um, we, when we were busy talking about this and the, these cases asking for counseling in a manner mm. of speaking came up, I'm like, okay, let, let us partner up. On this little thing, because clearly it's becoming a thing. So now uh, if people want to to talk to me on relationship i do the first screening so to speak yeah. to understand what the issue is all about and then on the next session then we can uh, rushka gets in and then she takes it over from there but it's a even for all my divorce matters children court matters and ah, all that, she assists with the mediation process if i'm not able to help the parties to get to you know consensus yeah. then she brings in her expert uh, opinions and knowledge and then she takes it further from there. Do you think that, and we spoke about this last time, the consensus thing, yeah. the, come on, you can fix this. Mm. Why are you breaking it? Yeah. Do you, is that your first instinct uh, when you, when a person calls and says, I want to divorce or you say, okay, I'll help, just help you along with the divorce or what is your first instinct when, when that happens? My personal first instinct is trying to see, can we fix it? Is there a way of you guys to mend it? Do you mm. need assistance, counseling, mm. offer all these avenues available? Ask if you've tried all these avenues before coming here. Yeah. And if after our first 30, 45 minute talk, you still admit, then... It's one of those that, you know, um, let's see how we continue with the divorce and make it as amicable as possible. possible. Um, but if in those 30, 45 minutes, there's a little bit of hesitance, I, I then offer the alternative. Because by law, in any event, we are bound to try and, and mediate. Mm. So that we can we can show to the court that we did attempt and all of that, um, you know, failure to do that sometimes, you know, leads to other unnecessary yes. things. So... If I can see a little bit of hesitancy, I'm like, okay, let's talk. Let's talk. What is the problem? What is going on? You know, I, you, you may, find that people are open. They are. Maybe because I'm a stranger. That's you know? true. Yeah. Um, so they become as open. Some end up crying. Some things I really don't even know how to deal with, mm. you know. But by virtue of opening up, I'm like, okay, how about next time you come, you bring your partner. Let's have a discussion. Yeah. 
And if it becomes a little bit too heavy for me, I bring my husband in because I work with my husband. And then it becomes a whole... At least there's a, there's a conversation a, amongst pe- adults. Adults, yes. you know. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it gives us a platform of making it as amicable as possible. And if after that conversation there is, okay, let's fix it, then we bring, we mm. send you to lead to, to experts who actually know how to handle that part. Yeah. And then... You guys will take it from there, you know, for example, Borushka that I work with or other um, marriage uh, therapists and yes, all of that. Okay. And then take it from there. Mm. Other times it brings us to a, an amicable divorce. There's no longer that anger. Leading. People are now coming um, off mm. to agree on certain things and then it makes it easier. It, it becomes an unopposed divorce. And then other times it just doesn't work. But 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 you're likely to get me, the one side, calling you, yeah. saying that I'm thinking of this. It's highly unlikely you'll find both of us calling you together to yeah. say, hey man, help us with this little thing. Yeah. Uh, so when what happens in a situation where I'm 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 calm mm. And the other guy on the other side is still hectic in terms of how what what he wants. Mm. What what is the procedure? So procedurally, it should be that the other party ought to have legal representation, mm. and then I can engage with the attorney so that yeah. I don't engage with the with him directly. Yeah. But most of the time, when somebody does come to me, the other party is not represented, which is common. You know? Which is very common. So when I make contact, I don't make contact via email. Mm. I even with attorneys, I I want to call first. Yeah, I, I, I am that person that wants that personal touch thing going on there. So I call first. I introduce myself, tell you why I'm calling, and then ask if you're willing to hear me out. Let's let's pause. Yeah, I pick up the phone. Mm. It's you. My wife called you. Mm. And you sat with my wife and she still wants to divorce. I'm likely to hear this from you if she didn't tell me she wants to divorce. Mm. I'm likely to hear it for the first time from you as a lawyer. Ooh, have you had that situation? I have. Ironically, I think um, I didn't finish the divorce. I don't know if they found somebody else, but it it never it never proceeded. Mm. Uh, or maybe they got back together. Maybe they got back together, <laughs> yes. you know. But um, what happened was that, that exactly that divorce. Eh. And no, what's up? David, solo, solo, so. And then I tell where my offices are and then they come through on their own. I'm like, no, can your wife come? No, 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 wait, wait. I want to hear you. Hey. And then now I have to regurgitate what I was told. Oh, boy. And then I have to give options to this person. Mind you, they're not my client. No. You know? So now I have to give this information and all of that. And it's it's not making sense, no. you know? And then it becomes a little bit difficult for me because I'm like, okay, what do I say now? Oof. Because... In actual fact, I shouldn't actually be talking to, to you. you. I should be talking to your lawyer. Yes. Um, but then the next session came uh, where we were trying to have a roundtable meeting for a settlement agreement. and With him now. With him and and, yes, and the yes. wife and everybody's there. And then it was... It was nice. Really? I was I was shocked because of the way the reaction I got from the husband. I was expecting a fight. The, the guy who was first surprised yes. about this. Yeah. And then somehow... Oops, somehow, wakopana, wabashapu, and I, they never came back. I don't Maybe know if they, they continued the divorce. Listen to the word you used. It was nice. Maybe they also enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and decided, Maybe we shouldn't do this. I hope so. I hope so. Wow, man. It's, and it, Let's talk about the, the procedure. I, I know a, a scenario of a friend that could not find a husband. Mm. The... Uh, the guy left uh, wherever he's gone to. He's unreachable. And now she still wants, to, obviously she wants to divorce. Mm. She calls you. Uh, you. What do you do? So now we have to process is that in order to institute divorce, you need to issue out the summons. Yeah. We need to in- issue it out to to your address. Mm-hmm. Like your divorce. Yes. But now we don't know where you live. Mm-hmm. So... The first thing we do is to try and trace you. Mm. So if 
obviously I would have your name, your ID number, and last cell phone number. Mm. We give it probably to the, place of work, you know. Yeah. So we give it to the tracing agent or whatever. And so the agents like that. Yes. There's someone right now who's tracing someone. Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope no one is tracing me. I hope so. <laughs> so somebody will then trace. Mm. this person for us if we're able to find the address great we amend our summons we put in the address it gets sent out mm. but sometimes that is not possible we will try and trace and trace and trace to no just avail to, just to get me to see the summons exactly just so you can be served and then the sheriff has to give us a return of service so the return of service if they can't find you usually we ends up being return of non-service. Mm. So and so David Mashabele is, is not found in this address. Somebody says he moved out or he doesn't exist in this address at all. Mm. Or it can be a return of actual service that it was handed to you mm. or handed to somebody over the age of 16 who knows that you do live oh. here and then they can receive it on your behalf. So that way... <laughs> hey, I, I, I imagine I walk here and my niece received it. <laughs> I am mad at her. For taking it. <laughs> I would like, ooh, ooh, I, I even say, it's none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. I yeah. see someone being yeah. upset at yeah, the, the messenger, lot. you know? It happens a lot. And then sh Sheriff Sabato, they get beaten up sometimes. They get Who threatened. wants to be Sheriff of the Court? <laughs> such, a, such a typical job. Oh, it's hard. I, I, I can only imagine. Because it's, 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 it's a contact job. Yeah. You have to physically go and see this person. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. And now now I can't be found at all. Mm. What happens now? Now we then we apply to the court to have the matter to be heard in in, in your absence. So Whoa. basically an ex parte application. So we are proving to the court saying, look, this is what we did. We sent emails to this person. This is the last known email address. It went unanswered for this much mm -hmm. time. We tried... Uh, Tracing this person, there's been a return that says there's nothing. The last known address was served because we have to serve you on that address, whether or not you will Or last known it. address. Hey, no wonder eh? hey. I still get letters about on this house. <laughs> you know, I'm getting old people who used to live here. Yes. So it, it easily could find that even a divorce could arrive here. Yes. Hmm, okay. so, so that we can show the court that we've done everything in our effort. power to try and serve this person, but we never got hold of them. Mm. And then thereafter, you know, we attach the affidavit of the applicant who, who, whether it's wife or husband who wants to divorce. And then all of that, and myself as the, as the attorney, I attach my affidavit as well to confirm that I did do all these things. Yeah. And then that bundle is sent to the court, a date is given, and then the court is looks at the paperwork. If the court is satisfied that we did everything, grants us the order whereby we can now continue the divorce without the person being But it's present. still possible the court will say, not, yeah, it's not enough. Try that happens. Else. It yeah. does happen. It does happen. That's why now at least the courts have opened up a little bit that you can even do service via social media. I was about to say. Yeah, you can send it via WhatsApp, via Facebook, via Twitter, just as long as you can prove that that user handle was belonged to that person, you know. So do everything. So that by the time you go to court, the court doesn't say, but you could have. Mm, you you know? didn't. Yeah. You, you can, can, can you say via WhatsApp? Yes, you need just need to get permission from the court. Oh, yes. So, so you don't just do it. No, you don't just do it. You just have to say, okay, the normal means of service are not working, but this person does respond when we send messages. messages. Via WhatsApp. We can see blue tick. We can see here, and they actually do respond. Ah. So, if the court will permit, can we rather do that? Because finding him or her has become. A tedious exercise. But that's only changed recently. Recently. It wasn't like that in the past. Yeah, you can't run anymore. No. Yeah. <laughs> he will find you. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I know of a scenario where in the paper, I saw a message. Yeah. What divorce. Yes. In the newspaper. Yes. I remember thinking, Jojo, kita was about to say Yes. I can't have a totally. We have to do everything. So if we know that perhaps that newspaper is within your area of jurisdiction where you possibly could, could be residing, yeah. we can advertise. There. I know someone that uh, put it in an African newspaper, <laughs> knowing very well that this guy won't reach. <laughs> 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 but they could that prove, was a classic. But they could prove, prove that, uh, no, I'm proving that it uh, Pretoria uh, newspaper. Yeah. He lives in Pretoria. Yeah. Africans. 
Mm -hmm. We've done our part. That's all you require. Yeah. Do your part. Show me you have tried. That's what the court wants. That's and it. That's that. And now, now we've done our part. Yeah. Do I get a, ah, you're divorced. Yes. Is it as simple as that? It's as simple as that. Once the court is happy with all the paperwork and everything, um, then we just put it on the, it could be, it could be done all in one day. It mm. depends on how each court decides, okay, each judge course. decides to do the matter. Mm. It could be that today we're only applying for us to be allowed to divorce without the other party okay. and then make an, a different application altogether wherein we're going to actually have the divorce being heard uh, without the other party being present. So, so, so uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to think, some courts, you walk in married yeah. by afternoon and you're still dealing with the application. Yeah. By afternoon, the judge says, ah, this is a simple one. Let's just get it out the way. Mm. Whoa. Mm. Is it difficult to divorce? No, it really isn't. The process is not difficult. The legal process isn't difficult. It's the parties that make it difficult. You say it's relatively easy to divorce. Yes. And 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 it's the le legality of it is I can call you on Monday and be divorced by Friday. Is it possible? If well, time both, frame wise, if no. both parties are okay with this. Yeah, no. Um, time frame wise, of course, it's determined by the courts. Of course, date. courts dates but and all of that. let's say hypothetically. In, in yes. an ideal world. In an ideal I, world. I want to divorce on Monday. On Friday, I'm out. Yeah. Simple as that. Parties are the ones that, that just, it's it's unnecessary. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. And because and we hey. don't agree on things. Mm. Where's the most common uh, disagreement? Is it possessions? It is possessions. It's money. Yeah. You know, possessions get you born. Um, the only main possession that is always a problem is the house. And then it's money. And then it's the children. And by money, I mean pension funds. Ah. And provident funds. <laughs> it's even money that's coming. It's not even now money. It's future money. All of those things. Those become the problem. And then, of course, children. That's How do you overcome those problems? If it's marriage in community of property, um, we look at Ntabi Singh's pension fund, how much it is at as of date of divorce or mm. the time we're trying to discuss divorce okay. and then uh, David's uh, pension. That's it. So if they are more or less the same, claiming from each other's pension funds does not make sense because it puts you in exactly the same place that you were at. Yes. I'm so, taking 50 rand from you, you're taking 50 rand from me. So what's what? What are we doing? You know? So in that instance, I always try and push that. Sorry. It doesn't make a difference, you know? But then also, remember, when you claim pension, it's actually cash that comes to you. So... People want to get out with cash so they can either pay debt or buy a new house or whatever the case may be. Mm. So it really doesn't matter that it's going to be like 50 rand. Nothing like the, that. The, the difference is that this 50 rand is coming cash, unlike Ella is coming in the future. Let's let's talk about that cash. Mm. And and because clearly it's, we, we may not have a common understanding. You have pension. Yeah. We married. Yeah. What cash is that? Is it my pension cash? If we're married in community of property, mm. that pension fund is mine just as much as it's, it's mine. But I'm still working. Yes. Doesn't matter. It's still I, mine. Yeah, let, let's talk about it. Okay. I, you said so, there's money that comes as cash. Yes. I'm still working for SABC. Mm. My 1.2 million is coming when I turn 65 for whatever age it is. Where is the cash? Is it future cash or current cash? No, it's current cash. So once we, let's say it is agreed that the pension fund shall be claimed mm. by each party. That's an agreement in the settlement. In the settlement. So, However, you can have a different agreement that says we'll get it in the future. Or not get it at all. Okay. Okay. Yes. Keep going. So um, if the agreement is I'm claiming the money, mm. then it means that once the divorce is done, we need to make sure that the settlement agreement is structured in the exact wording that the Provident Fund Act would want it to be. And so there is that. Yes. Yeah. And also the way, the wording that the Divorce Act would want it to be, right? So we put in the pension fund number, the the the, the name of the person whose pension fund is holding and mm. all of that David Mashabelo with ID number 1, 2, 3, That's 4, it. 5 with pension number 6, 7, 8 huh. and all of that. And then once we the divorce is granted, then the party claiming then submits to that pension fund mm. their settlement agreement along with the the divorce uh, decree. Okay. Okay. And then 
the the claim is all the money that you would have accumulated 10 years before I came into your life up until date of divorce. So that 1.2 million becomes in the future, it would have been 1.2 million. Yes. So now I am now entitled to take 600,000 of it. Of it. And then it even if to, even its future value, because that's what you'll, you'll be claiming. No, you're only you're claiming what is current, currently in, the, in yeah. the account. So if, 1.2 is in the future. We're not claiming that 1.2. Of course. But if currently, when I look in your pension fund, it's worth so much, yeah. Then I take half of what is currently in your yeah. pension fund. Have, have people yet. divorced? <laughs> and it's a dumb question. Have people divorced for that? Yes. Only. Uh. <laughs> and then they remarry. Ay, 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 Wait a minute. Because now the main reason to do that was to pay debt. There were in over their heads with debt and they didn't want to get sequestrated because getting out of that is also difficult and all of that. So people just divorce on paper and then claim the pension and then their life really continues as normal. You know, and then for a few months, where it's not suspicious. You know, oh, yeah, even a year, two years. You know, and I decided I'm marrying my wife again. Can I go? You were still living together, mujolons all thing, and and all of that. Yeah. Wow, people have divorced for money, for pension money. Mm. What else is there? What other scheme <laughs> <laughs> exists in this world? Surely the mass. Oh. I've, I've been dealing with a situation where someone owed me money, they transferred property from from themselves to to the partner. Yeah, to avoid uh, my claim. Yes, <laughs> and now it's. But yes. hey, that's a But tell, what other scheme is there? What 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 comes to mind when you think about what people could do in try in divorce but trying to make money off it? There's one I actually read off recently. It's a case. It's a recent case. It was decided in the high court. Mm. This man, there was a divorce pending for I don't know how many years, and this man has money for days. Yeah. So what he did is that he gave his brother the money and says no 28 years ago my brother borrowed mm. uh whatever millions it was so you know i'm i'm paying that back and i, I borrowed rather from my brother this 28 million so now oh, i'm now paying, I'm paying, it, paying back. it back so i don't have money i don't have money and then the other amounts he transferred to his uh his, his is it his mother's deceased estate or something like that sure. to, because it needs to be finalized and and like he got rid of, of money all his money and then came to court and said prove that i have money so there is this uh, form that we fill in. It is a it's it's a basically a disclosure of all your bank accounts and all assets, of that and, and if, assets yeah. and stuff. So it shows this trail of money getting out. <laughs> so the court is like and like and like. And you like, think we are idiots? You know, <laughs> but all that money, it I hold, and then I am fifty percent of it. So, so did he, did this person lose that case? He lost that case. So the the divorce was granted, and the woman is entitled to fifty percent. Char. Yeah. Who divorces more? Um, based on your observation, in the past it used to be women that divorced more. Okay. Uh, for various reasons. Of late, at least in my practice, I'm being approached by men. Who want to get out? Yes, I, I, I've, I've said before that I think my practice has become the, the, the men's forum because <laughs> uh, it's the men conference. What's well, king? <laughs> because there are men coming because they've got major issues with access to their children. Ooh. There are men coming because of maintenance issues. There are men coming because of divorce. Majority of my family matters right now. I only have two, whereby they are female that are going ahead yeah. with everything. The rest are men. Yo. Yeah. Are you seeing a pattern? I am. Um, I think men, the, the, the clients that I have at least, are coming to the realization that they need to be present, you know, at least for the, for the children's mm. cases and all of that. They want to be in their children's lives. They want to be dads in one form or another. And they are being deprived this opportunity for whatever reason, because I haven't, so far, I haven't had the opportunity to speak to the mothers. Yeah, so so I don't know what the issue is. I yeah. only have one side of it. And you hear men that are talking from hurt 
uh, in in my practice at least and the men who are saying that you know what I don't want to I don't want my son I don't want my daughter to go through what I went through because I grew up without my dad being around yeah. you know so that is basically what they they they're trying to do they're trying to change the narrative in their children's lives mm. because of whatever they have gone through up until this particular moment that they're like you know what let me try and see if I can get help unfortunately one of my guys um got arrested for having taken his own child or trying really badly to see the child he he it was an arrangement come and get your child on friday and then sunday in fact it was friday for the for the june holidays mm. and it's that recent it's that recent Yo. and then unfortunately he went and then on the way he got called and said skahlotsotl who's calling mom yes don't come hey. and fetch the child and then to avoid he's already on, he's already on the way to uh, to avoid fighting a jig but child is as old as my daughter called Waiting. called him is like aibo why am i hearing mom say that you're not coming anymore what's going on and then dad is like wait what do you mean you're hearing your mom she, did she mm -hmm. she called you yeah where is she oh mom doesn't live here oh no mom just comes as and when i live with the cock how oh. it's a u10 when then fetch the child fetch the child half is a mon no the child lives in a very not a nice situation so as a father seeing that and looking at the money i romelang for maintenance and all of these things he just he's like you know what pack up your stuff let's go and then he took his son everything let's everything. go yeah that's exactly what he did and then they are here now and what not so um a case of kidnapping was opened against oh, him wow. and all of that but he's out now on bail so he even went to jail yeah he got arrested he got arrested spent Saturday and Sunday. Oh no, got arrested the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> everybody no, everybody knows weekend. don't get arrested on a on yeah. a weekend. And you know what the annoying part of that case is that it the case in the Cape somewhere. Mm. The 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 cops that were contacted by the cops from the, from the Cape. I spoke to this guy. And now Lena we understand how it Already, works. Yeah. But no no type say man. He's just going to come. I don't even know him from a bar. Oh yeah, soap. he's going to come and he's going to come um, with a statement. Eh? Take and, fingerprints hey, and, and yeah. take pictures and walk on. And then yeah. I need to just go see the child give one one now sharp and it. all of yeah. that. And then that was fine. My client went and did all of that and then he went back to work. Man see we are half the, the guys makwa but lile like they are arresting uh, 11 of CU oh no like did, do you get a sense that it was influenced by somebody <laughs> no not necessarily they were just doing their uh, job just, yeah because when i was able to get the contact information of the ios for, for from that side mm. very helpful people like yeah. in fact the io was a lady and and, and a gentleman uh and shem they were telling me no oh sorry they arrested him on thursday jeez at 11 So it was Friday and then Friday he appeared in court. Yeah. They made sure because when I got hold of them eventually mm. they're like no Skawa house and type say we'll make sure that he appears in court on Friday. Mm. And I'm like okay are you going to oppose bail or not? No 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 we're not going to oppose bail. Speak to the prosecutor let me know. They spoke to prosecutor I called them later they're like no bail granted 500 rand. I'm like okay great. So then the family was informed then they went Palopata Lili and then he came back on the Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, I got the message on Sunday that he's back this yeah. side. So That's so complicated, yeah. eh? And the, the the IOs keep following up. Shem, they're very nice. They're like, yes. "So, how is it going? How's the case going?" I'm like, "No, the children's court case is yet to actually start this side because that's where now that the child is here, we have to now do the Is it still with is it still with the child? Yes. Wow. Yeah. And probably the child is happier with the dad. Yes. yes. That's another interesting bit that a lot of people ignore in the story of of children that mm. it's about the happiness of the mm. child. Wow, man. So there's a lot of nyaga nyaga out there. Yes, there is a lot. Cuz cuz I think the woman is equally wrong for one not living with the child and taking all this money. Yeah. And probably using it for whatever means that they're doing with yeah. the money. Hey, anyway, I realize that uh, you solve a lot of these problems unintended <laughs> relationship stuff issues. Family and relationships. Mm. Do you come across that a lot where you realize that 
there's another voice that's probably not even in, present in this meeting mm. that is influencing the situation. Yeah. Tell us what crosses your mind almost immediately. I think I spoke about this case the last time we spoke where yeah. I was like this couple should not divorce. Yeah, you did. Yes. That is the that is the first couple that came to my head how so You know what? That couple if it wasn't for family, they would still be together. If it wasn't for family, they would have figured out a way to talk and communicate with each other. So there was an influence there coming from... There was a from huge influence. Yeah, from the, from, the, from the husband's side, like, no, man, but you don't listen. And when I observed them in the two or three times that we were together... When they are... When they are the two alone, of them, yeah. She actually is able to, you know, there's a difference between listening and hearing somebody. She would hear him and go like, no, for that, I am sorry. Wow. What I assumed would be, you know, and instead of that being, okay, let's take it from here and see if you can work it out. Mm. It went into an, I think, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I think maybe realizing that, wait, Haika Mutio actually listens, but that voice is still It's still another voice. You know, it's like, no, but it, it's been 20 some odd years. Nothing has changed. So why would it change now? All of a sudden. It yeah. sounds like talking about uh, a certain political party. <laughs> <laughs> right? Will they change now? Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden. Yeah. Because because I, I realized in the conversation that we had last time uh, that it, it always comes across to this con communication issue. Mm. But then communication by its nature, I know what I know because of the life that I've lived. Yes. Because of the influences external and so forth, mm. the books I've read and so forth and so forth. That has made me the person that I've become. Mm. And so, but, but, but that doesn't stop. I continue to evolve. I'm going to hear something for the first time today and it's going to add another layer to my character. And I realize that that's really where it all ends up uh, because sometimes when I the concept of Bege Begezela, mm. Begezela is, in, is family mm -hmm. or, or friends or, or, or. Have you found a Begezela scenario where this woman, mm. don't leave because where are you going? Mm. This is, it's not so bad. What is that Regazela concept, in your opinion? I don't know where that comes from. I, but when you look at history, remember, um, women didn't work back in the day. Mm. So they relied on their men for provision of everything. Yeah. So how tamaya otoyakai? You can't go back home because when you go back home, you're now adding to your father and your mother's um, burden. burden yeah. you know? So who's going to feed these children? Who's going to take care of you? Oh, these people. Hey, so now it was viewed as and for that person, for David to go to and go take and care of that's you. That's true. So now, what are we supposed to do? There's no space for you anymore. Mm. You know? That was why... Uh, even though Mahadi, the Mahadi ka ka, when you speak to the elder, the elders of the elders, they will tell you Mahadi in a loho malapa. True. So it was, and the homutse, you know, was to make sure that when my child now lives with you, mm. there's enough meat and enough milk for her to, to look be after the care, child, yeah. To be taken care of by you because now I'm giving her to you. Mm. So that was the purpose, Yamahide. Over time, it's lost that meaning. And then the more it lo it loses that meaning, the more it becomes uh, a, a purchase. Yes, of that, course. That, you know, ten thousand, you're now mine. I can do with you as I please. This entitlement concept that you say so clearly, you're now mine. Yeah. I, um, it, it's like a possession. Mm. Uh, is, it, is it something that we continue to deal with in, in society? I would like to think we are more modernized. I think it's become worse more what? than anything else because if you listen to how people understand the concept of of mahadi or lobola mm. it is that thing hori okay but how i get school how mm. pay why am i paying so much for you for you yeah you know mahadi wasn't to pay for what for for me as a brand as a person mm -hmm. or whatever or, or the services or, the, or, or my services <laughs> yes. or, or one, it was about who aha the family. Yes. So that when it's rough this side, but if you look at what is happening now in marriage, it is not that situation. Yeah. But it's also 
bad do bazan au le munyetse mo you sort it out that's your problem yeah you know or vice versa when it becomes tough for the child atlolela ka monana they don't even ask twice and now it, 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 oh, it's a mess yeah it's a mess I, i i don't know what happened i really don't where, know where we lost it mm. yeah because I, i imagine at some point we had it right because yeah. because the entitlement thing is as you put it it's gotten worse i would think it's gotten better with more more educated folks mm. more people who know more uh who are not as traditional but the way you describe it the traditional way was a better way of yeah. doing it yeah because now it's transactional more than than building if i if i'm going to pay 50,000 rand for mm. mahadi for you you better bring to the table your education the you value. better make sure you better you know there's all these things and if you don't bring it then you must know who Hul la saka sieta haka mona as the man yeah. because now you don't bring all these things and I paid this much money so which means I'm the one unwanak so oh. I have to make sure ho o shapo so o tlodwa ka nna that is the basically what is happening you know you almost struggle to find anyone to blame in the story because it evolved so over time yeah. however you you almost can't help yourself acknowledge also these exorbitant amounts yeah. that are charged yes. they Uh, you know I I remember my girl telling me that if you want to marry me you better have 300,000 rands. <laughs> I mean I know for sure I'm not marrying you. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes me wonder also the problem is on both ends when I feel like I really paid a lot and I'm in a leg yeah. for this. Yeah. Yes. Um I was give examples kind because it's easier. So my mom because of this the idea Yama Hadishi loads it. Really? She does not like it. Yeah. But she understands that it is part of the she understood it's mm. part of the of the process. Yes. She had to respect the yes. the tradition. Khabali agreement she said Sabelo and I down like guys. Mamela. We will go through the process. It's fine. But I'm not keeping that money because I don't want a scenario a situation where by one day you will come and say regile wana ka or wana ka is scared to come back because she's because okay, there's money that's you know? yeah so are we in agreement that was the agreement. we don't need to tell everybody we didn't yeah. tell anybody i'm sure my mother in law watching this when she watches it <laughs> <laughs> she's like oh is that how it, how it happened <laughs> but anyway uh that is what happened yeah what we saw na mahadi and who are leaving leaving and what not how so could do when lunch was being had and all of that Mom came to my room, gave me the money back, and it paid for things for the wedding. That's the beauty of it. You know, it paid for things for the wedding. Um some got left over mm. or whatever and all of that. And it gave such a good relationship between yeah. him and her. Hapa kaba na kaba na katsa bona but not because of of this situation underlying you know those underlying tones that are uh, you don't have any right or any claim over this person does it stay though that underlying in your observation that underlying tone as you put it that was caused by the first transaction mm. between the families we came We stood at the gate, mm. we knocked, we sent a letter, we knocked and some guy was on a tree and we had to give him alcohol for him to get mm. off the tree and 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 the whole thing was fine and so yeah. forth and then we got in we sat and they said 180 down. Mm. And already the tone has changed. Yeah. I wonder if it stays, it lingers in the bloodstream <laughs> if it's a poison. I think it does. Um some fam- may, it may not necessarily be within the husband per se yeah. because you build your life and you decide how you're going to deal with it going forward but the family members that were present on the day the uncles mm. the parents sometimes and all of that they have that calling and like and then they 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 sometimes feed it to either party whether it is to the to 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 makoti that how many you telling and how many you i go to 180000 but how to be also cap up Yo. you know stuff oh, like oh. that if you hear the stories samakoti and their in-laws they're horrific 
And then some choose not to never, like they don't go to their in-laws house. You can take you and your kids, as in my husband can take him and the kids. Mm, and live a... Now I'm not going to come, you know, go visit, go do whatever. I'm not a part I'm not of that. Go there, yeah. And that's know? not good. It's not good. It really isn't because now the kids, as the older they grow, when they hear why there's no relationship between Gogo and mom, now they're going to obviously going to choose their mother's side. Most times they're going to yeah. choose their mother's side. And then that causes another rift in the family that should not be there. Is there a scenario where there's, you've, uh, personally, I think this is my logic about marriage and I'm, surely I'm wrong, which is probably why I'm not married. Um, I married you. Yeah. You are married into our family now. You are a mashabela. Mm. Uh, you are no longer that side at all. Mm. You don't even need to call them. You don't need to interact with them. I remember last time we spoke, you said <laughs> money, women's money always goes to their, to their family. Mm. Uh, is, there, is there a logic to the idea of now you are this side, you're no longer that side, you don't even need to deal with them at all? Is that something that happens in relationships? The way I've understood it is that once I am now a mashabel, mm -hmm. Mewaka is your mom. Your dad is my dad. I may have been raised, I'm allowed to have contact and whatnot because they raised me and all of that. But literally before I go home and cry about anything, whether it is you as my husband mm. or anything at all, I have first have to start high, which is Hamashabel. Your new home. My new home and go like, yo. I need one, two, three, four, or I need intervention or whatever. Mm. And only if they cannot help, then you go home. I go home. Because when they are born, so everything that's going to happen is under the mashabela umbrella. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter that I come from that side because everything going forward is now on the mashabela side. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that is how it was supposed to be. The purpose of building that. Those families. Yes. Yeah. So that when I say it is rough, mom and dad mashabela can go like wanaka. Here let's let's go. find something you know yeah. and then it is not held over my head or over our heads as a couple that don't forget mm -hmm. don't forget you know because we are a family now i get a sense that uh, and this is also going back to the last example you made when the girl takes money home mm. that it's not practiced like that at all mm. to a point where uh, you are married to mashabela but your link is so strong with your family uh, I, I I know of a, of a scenario where this poor guy has had the husband, the wife's mother, living with them, mm. and and it, like there's this new family that's brewing in his own household mm. where he could not access his wife as easily as he used he to could, be yeah. because the ma mother lives here, sisters are always here, mm. a younger brother, yeah, the, the wife is always here. And surely that can be, that's not how it was meant to be. It's not how it's meant to be held. It's not even supposed to be that I we live under your 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 mom and dad's hut, house. house. Remember there were like huts in, in a in a in a in a in an community in of hey. yeah, yeah. So Mona Nakiha senior melin tatemashabela and this is now ours yes. so what happens in here should not mirror what's happening in there we are trying to make sure that we're growing our own our own situation here so if you're going to bring that kind of 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 situation in and then your your family whether it's yours or mine but mm. in this situation it's it'll it's be mine. it'll be yeah my family is now the, i'm continuing with when You've I never came, changed. I, yes. I haven't changed. And I'm not trying to adapt and build a life with you going forward. A new life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember when um, my son was born, getting a nanny wasn't an option. It was around about the time where, you know, nannies were doing all sorts of things to kids. Mm. I was very scared. Oh, yeah. It was, uh, yeah. It, it was a horrible yeah. time then. And then my mom had just retired. Mm. And we asked her, can you come in and, and help? You know? I remember... Clearly, she set us down. <laughs> My husband was like, "Ah, oh, how hectic!" You know, <laughs> what's a meeting? You know, <laughs> she sits us down and says, "I am here, not as your mother." She points at me. I'm like, "Okay, I'm not here as your mother. I'm not here as your mother-in-law. I'm here to help you with your child. Do not expect me to sit and." chill with you as a family, family. unit Whoa. and watch TV and all of these things. I am not that. I am not here to disturb what you have already 
wow. build or at least trying to continue to build. I will be present for prayers. Mm. I will be present for dinner. I'll eat with you guys. Because I'm in the house. Yes, I'll yes. be present for lunches and all of that. Only when you would require that I come and sit with you will I come. Otherwise, I am not going to sit with you. I was hurt. Yeah, I'm thinking, geez, man, this is your hurt. mother. <laughs> like it, it crushed me. Because mm. I'm like, but ma, you and I have the best conversations. What are you doing? You know? But in the long run of it, wow. Did she do it? Did she, she did, no, practice she, no, it exactly no, as she said? My mom doesn't it? play. My mom Whoa. doesn't play. She stuck to it to the T. Didn't you say, hey, come. A few times. Because you would do that. Yes. And as the, as the, as my son grew and my daughter grew, you know, playing games and family games and stuff, they would come and get her and say, Coco, come play with us. The 30 seconds. Mm, all all of, of that. these things. When the game is over, she goes right back to the bedroom. She doesn't come <laughs> and hang out with us and whatnot. Wow. Because she understood, I guess, the psychology yes. of her presence in the house. Yeah. It's disruptive. Yes. It's yes. not. It's not a, 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 a typical nanny. No. And then, then use use that same example with your younger sister now, or older sister mm. who's living with you. Yeah. The same. It's kind of disruption. Yeah. And I'm I'm sure it's even worse as a as a sister. I don't have one. You know, the body, your the body. Because you grew up like you know, you know, travel, she you knows go. your secrets and all of those things. And you're scannering at the corner together, giggling. Well, I imagine the husband. You know but what is what in your opinion and and your mom's opinion, I guess, in this context, are the long term implication of of that of her presence in the house. What was she worried about? She said she doesn't want to make my f husband feel like he he is not a member of his own family, family. or a head of his own family yes, for that matter you know she wanted him to always feel hurry everything still has to go through him before anything is done mm. because it's not like he's there all the time no so when he is gone wherever decisions are made you know we chill and we talk and certain things we decide on really too but before anything is implemented her last words would be wow. and if he's not okay with it then we can't continue it doesn't sound like that's what happens no <laughs> yes no. it doesn't sound like that it at all I, I i i i see a mother-in-law your mom in this context who is quite present yeah. in your marriage. Yeah. You know, in, this, is, this is what I imagine happens, and I could be completely wrong, mm. but I imagine that there is a, a young husband somewhere who's dealing with a permanent mother-in-law mm. who is very present in their marriage. Mm. That can't be good. No, it can't be good. I'm not even saying my scenario was easy. No. I, it, it was far from it. But when you hear other people and what they're going through you're like you know what i i thank mom for having that wisdom to say i type saying it's not ideal to have your mother in the house no and then let me just talk about me not even talk about mother-in-law having your mother in the house yeah. you're used to doing things the way you want in your house but you're older now you're yes. an older girl now but the second your mom is there you go back into child mode <laughs> you know whether you intentionally do it or not so what's about me likes it this way likes it that way and then you end up doing things in that way yeah. you know and then you're older there's certain things that you would like to do in freedom have a drink you know, <laughs> yeah, have a glass of wine things, you know but mom yeah. is there you can't. It's not so easy, you know? So it is not ideal to live with any parent, whether it is yours or your husband's. But um, if you have a parent that is understanding and saying that, you know what, my portion is mm. this part. Mm. And then they actually do give you that space as a family. And if, you, if you're resourced enough to even have a completely separate, yes. which way uh, which they call it a granny flat. Hey, you know, yes. Then your life in the house remains... Fine. Independent from yeah. all this, because the influence can be good. No, I don't think it's good. I no. don't think because so. I'm thinking of 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 you know of finances that we don't have as people, mm. where you're forced to live with your with your your either your moms or or your, rather the husbands or the or the mm. wives, but you just made it clear that it can possibly be good in the long run, mm -mm. unless if kukudula kwa. And the kids can go hang out with, with Granny and all of that. And once in a while, mm. she's in the house for a few minutes. 
Sure. Yeah. We live in such difficult times. <laughs> Bl- blended families is a co- is a challenge yeah. with a lot of people. Yeah. And I'm sure you find a lot of that in in marriages where uh, in divorce as well. Sure, this is tricky in my head. I married you. Mm. You came with a child. The child was relatively young. A uh, child calls me dad cuz irrespective of whether Uh, his dad is present or not mm. recognizes this guy who's always in the house with my mother mm. and and his dad and mm. when asked no i have two dads i have dad one and dad two mm. all is good um we have a child a brand new child of ours and life carries on we have two life just moves on and now we divorce who Mm. I'm thinking about the first child, mm. that child that calls me dead two or dead one or whatever mm. it is. What is lost now? Yeah. Cuz there's a big chance that that child will leave with you. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. cuz you're the mother. Mm. That scenario surely can work well for this this kid or us as me as the dad mm. dead one mm. let me call myself dead too i have to find a way to also continue this relationship or not how do you analyze this weird scenario <laughs> well you just gave me goosebumps um i think maybe because i'm lucky enough the questions you ask is things that have hap- have i am living through yeah. so i got married with my daughter she was very very young mm. and um the first time she used the word dad she used it with with my yes, husband yeah and as she's grown up she knows that what whenever she would ask like so mommy papa ki mita enke whatever you want o mita papa ka po mita daddy it's up to you and what if people ask she's talking about your husband she's asking about her biological oh father. okay she calls him papa she yeah. calls, she calls my husband daddy Okay, at least there's a yeah. there's a separation of some sort you know, in in in, in her, her mind. Head. Yes. And then she asked me, she was very young, she was about 5, I think. She asked me, so what do I say when people ask me? Mm. Do I say I have two dads? Do mm-hmm. I say I have one dad and the other one doesn't? What do I say? And then I try to explain to her as best as I could at 5 years old that you know what? Um your dad is your dad. and then papa ke papa you have two dads you're the luckiest kid in the world that's how i put it and that's how she grew up and she decided as she goes older she's deciding the older she grows how she's going to differentiate them yes yesterday we were watching cheaper by the dozen okay. the new one mm, with mm. gabriel union and stuff and the biological father of gab's children came and what not he did something stupid and mm. the kids were not impressed and all of that because they were now with the new dad. new dad she says to me you see between the two of them that one is papa with this look on her face and that's Ooh. the first time i've actually seen her express Some, feeling yeah about that so i myself haven't had that conversation with her yet to understand her um uh, what's going on in your head you know what's happening has the relationship changed and all of that because i i i've tried so much not to overstep my boundaries i don't ask what happened when they go visiting i don't want to know because i don't want her to feel like i want the report back mm. so because once you start with the reporting system early she will continue to do that yes forever, forever. almost yeah. yeah but i was with him and this is what we did mm. and it's neither here nor there for you yeah. i imagine some women will, that will matter yes Hurry. we did this we did that we did that yes. for me i was like you know what that's your time with with your dad or your father however you want to call him let it be that yeah. if you want to tell me stuff tell me stuff otherwise my only question is did you have fun Yep, I'm like great. Great. That's it. That's what I also I did you learn anything, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. Me. So that is that is the situation. So um imagine now divorce. Ooh. Cuz I added another layer. Yeah. We've had this discussion but not necessarily about divorce but about death. Yes, yes. In the event that I die, what are we going to do? Yeah. What are you Sabelo going to do because legally speaking you have no rights whatsoever 
over Numpumelela, like zero. Mm-mm. What are you going to do? You know, what do we put in place? What mechanisms can we go through and all of that? So we've explored. Are there mechanisms? Not really. What you can, what I'm thinking now is that when, if I should die before she turns 18 mm. and then legally she has to now leave and go yeah, live with, with him. Yes. What with he can, Papa. with Papa, mm. then he, he would have to apply to the court, the children's court and say, and by virtue of history, say that this child leaving and going hap up is going to cause problems da 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 the child can i remain the primary caregiver not parent almost almost like adopting hey can child. i be an, a guardian of, of sorts yeah. you know and then she still continues with her visitations mm. that is what i am thinking because right now the idea of adopting he papa would have to consent i was about to to get there Hore. Surely the consideration of adopting, so to officialize yeah. this end, mm. is not, a, is not a, a necessarily a bad option. It's not a bad option, but Papa would have to consent first that he's giving up his parental rights. And by it, it, does that mean legally giving up? Legally, That's what it means. That yeah. means legally giving up everything. You so, can stay Papa, but yeah, not on paper. Yeah, not on paper. So it means that... By choice, then she can choose to now take on daddy's surname. All of that. All of that and all of that because currently she's using my maiden surname. Yes, right? okay. So now that that would be the, the conversation and, and all of that. So it would be difficult, <sighs> but it is doable. I've heard one case, one case that I know what it actually happened. Mm. A seven-year-old sat down their papa and said, I don't want this side. Mm. I'm happy that side. Mm. I think... <laughs> and, wow, and, I think you should help me move or move to the side. And Papa had money. Like lots but of money. But still chose but the kid was like, nope. I choose the I poor choose dad. The <laughs> I choose the yeah, poor dad. I choose the side and she was officially adopted, I think, at age nine, I think. And that was like in the eighties. So yes, yes. Yeah. So there is casework, I guess, in that yeah, regard. There's so yeah. there's a reference. Yes. But I imagine that uh, parenting. Uh, co-parenting mm. surely must have its own trick tricks when it comes to sustaining a marriage and making it helping it along to mm. be solid mm. good or bad because then uh, who knows it might just be the one thing that that helps it to survive mm. uh, but, but I'm thinking about some of the cases you've seen or just your own observation surely co-parenting when you brought in a child and I have my kids and we are coming together and we have this thing going there will be a moment where I don't like your child. Mm. I don't even know how to discipline your child. Mm. I don't. I know I don't have rights to discipline your child. Kinda. Yo, mm. we're le pause. Class is broken. I don't even know how to raise my voice mm. to this child. Mm. Yo, how do people do it? I think the best way is to have that conversation from the onset, from the moment you d- you guys decide to be serious whether getting engaged or you're deciding to permanently live together, it is a conversation that has to be had between the two of you as adults. to listen, you're bringing your son, I'm bringing my daughter. They're going to be living under the same roof. We need to have rules. Same rules. Same rules. It can't be that when I discipline your son, you go on the side and go like, Skawar. There's a little clan. There's a fictional, yeah. <laughs> fictional It should issues. not be that way. And same thing that when you discipline my child, I also go like, shh, shh, it cannot be. It should be that when we discipline, we discipline together. Mm. We are a united front in front of the kids. But if I disagree with what you did, the we'll two deal of with us in the, the bedroom, bedroom. Hi, Muna, Luna, you were too harsh kind of yes. situation but it should be said on the onset I, I I remember having that conversation I was like Nompumelelo is two at the mm, time mm. going on three I mean, she has you wrapped around her little finger I mm. told him I'm like she has you wrapped around her little <laughs> already finger, and I cannot have that yeah I can see what's going on here I, I am like I cannot have you being Mr. Nice Guy mm. Because I am very, I'm a disciplinarian. I, I, I need this to be done. Did you find that he was being nice 
to overcompensate. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So that, you know, I don't like her child. Oh, yes. Of course. There's that factor. You know, and all of that. I'm like, I cannot because she's going to grow up and be a teenager. And if she has you around her finger, she's going to get away with too many things that I won't be able to discipline out of her because she has you in your in her corner. Exactly. So you need to step up. I know you haven't been a parent before. You're all of a sudden a parent. <laughs> oh, yes. You like know? A, in, in a relationship, you walk in and you're already you're a parent. parent. Yeah. I'm like, so you need to yeah. you need to step up. You need to step up and make sure that when she does something wrong, you discipline. Yes. Yeah. I can't go shopping because Linda shopping is not my yeah, thing. Exactly. But you make sure what discipline that's what she knows tomorrow she shouldn't do it again. And it's been like that since. And and because your daughter is this tall girl. Yeah. She, clearly this is worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it has to work. And now the older that they get, we discipline them together. So if you do something wrong, it influences your sibling. Collective responsibility. <laughs> so you should be holding each other accountable. Where is this? Wow. Did you do this? I like that. Yeah. So if you messed up here, you should know your brother is going to suffer your consequ the consequences and vice versa. I remember once a political party said that. They said they lost a, pro a municipality mm. and uh, they didn't know who to blame. And they said it's all of us. <laughs> so, so I guess it works like that as well. Once, yeah. On the idea of, of kids... I've had, and I'm hoping someone does that with me. <laughs> I hoping someone has a child with me to keep me. Yeah. I've heard of situations where someone is saying, let me have a child with them. Or oh, the relationship is struggling. Mm. It's going through its own challenges. And we uh, decide to have a child mm. collectively to try to help this relationship along. Mm. That's one scenario. Yeah. Another scenario is, let me have a child with him, which is what I'm hoping happens. Let me have a child with him <laughs> and so he doesn't leave. Mm. Does that work? The first scenario of, of let us, we are fighting, we're not doing well. Let's use a child to help us along. I don't know. I, I, I Maybe the child would be used as a crush more than anything else. Now the child is overburdened. Walked in and already there was fire. You know? Um, but other times I, I would assume that um, if it was an agreement to do this, maybe we can agree to now work on our issues because ah. there's this now this new human being that needs us to be healthy mentally and, and everything in order to take care of them, you know? Um, but sometimes parents end up splitting in any event, even after all of that. But... If it's in that scenario, um, I, I know this one colleague I used to have, the child didn't know that him and, and the mom had split until she was like 14 years old. They split when the child was like one. They had such a beautiful relationship. Wow. Because the reason for splitting was that, you know what, we tried this child to see if we can... You know, Den it's not way. working. But you and I, as friends... We're very good. We are very good. And the relationship is not working out. Mm -hmm. Really, it's not working out. So let's slowly just break away from each other. Mm -hmm. And it's made their relationship so strong. They're both individually married. They moved on with their lives. There's the, the common factor is the history and the child. And, and the child. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. break up, but they get along like a house on fire. That's amazing. And even their partners have become friends. friends. So that's a it's stock, a stock fair. Oh, oh, yes. And this child is just one of the happiest. And because they get both sides of the story. You know? Yes. So my thing is, I think for Batubaruna, it seems that that should not be allowed. I actually didn't think it could happen. You're like, I know why are you busy? Why are you moving on? You were talking for 20 minutes on the phone with your ex. You know? What is that about? And you realize that there are people that can actually be very mature about a situation and make it work so well yeah. that everybody is 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 happy. Is, you know, so blend blend families clearly work, mm. but uh, at the core of all conversations you and I have is, if you speak about things openly, frankly, yeah. everything falls into place. Because I learn with time that sometimes, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I am, maybe maybe you wouldn't know because you experience it from a different side. As a man, 
I wish we could tell you guys the truth mm. about a lot of things. Mm. But I realize that men, we end up sugarcoating a lot of things for the sake of peace. Men are likely to do that in my observation more than women. Mm. Where I'm not particularly happy to see you today. Or I just want to hang out with my friends. For sure, for sure. That will bring me happiness. Mm. Or I didn't like that thing you did. But, ah, or you're gaining weight for peace sake. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know how to navigate across it. Mm. And I end up just letting it be. Mm. Babes, how do I look? Beautiful, my baby. Mm. Where else? Their truth is different. Mm. And I, I realize that most men, and if I'm wrong, Bahaitsu, leave the comments. Because <laughs> I maybe I am. Yeah. Most men would rather lie or not tell and put it on the table as is than they would. Mm. What is your observation? I think so too. Um, when you hear conversations mm. about couples, you know, how they've navigated a few things and stuff. So some say I tried to hint. <laughs> it didn't go right. You shouldn't have hinted. Eh? should have just said it, you know. And then you hear women like go like, but you should have just told me. It would have been easier to hear that. Not always the case. Now I'm speaking from a woman's perspective. It won't be nice to hear that you would rather spend time with your friends other mm. than me. Mm. But or what you really think about my weight. You know what I mean? Yeah. But in the same breath, would you rather have him there until... Mm, or seeing and feeling that the attraction is no longer there and knowing what the truth is in order to get to what it is. Yeah. You know, I always say that, remember, before you fell in love, before you decided, oh my gosh, this is a beautiful thing, we want to get married. There was a physical attraction of course, first. Yeah. He got attracted to what you looked like and vice versa. When you got to know each other, then the love would develop and, you know, yes, it, it would lead it would. to other things. So time is time and life will happen. Having said that, when you change, but if you expect him to accept you the way that you currently are versus what you were, it means that if he starts balding, Mm -hmm. If he gets yeah. old, if he loses a tooth, you should accept him for what he is. He's starting to limp now. You know, yes. you can't be going to Ben 10 because Ben 10 reminds you of what he used to look like. It can't be that. So it needs to be a reciprocal yeah. situation. I'm accepting you, accept me. You know, and when you start saying that, people, but, like, I'm at, but Lena, he should know. No, if Lena, he <laughs> should know, then Luena, you should know yeah. that you have changed. We're not saying being a supermodel or whatnot, but don't let the change be so dramatic yeah. that it changes the dynamic of the relationship to that extent. That has our shaba the way that you would like to be looked at. You get bigger in marriage. <laughs> yes, but you but but you don't have to. You don't have to. You can do something about you know, it. Yes. Uh, I no up a size forty four at some stage. Yeah, I woke up one day and my mom took me shopping. Contempo. <laughs> we got to Contempo. SJ, my youngest, was about maybe going on two years, eighteen months, somewhere there. So when in my head, I have shrunk back to my... I haven't done to, anything to about 40, it. To your 40, way. yes, mm. yeah. <laughs> but I've shrunk back to my size 36. Yes. <laughs> go to the clothes section, put on a size 36. It doesn't even go beyond my thighs. <laughs> oh, boy. And then I start putting on 38, 40, 42. I had to suck in my... <gasps> To try and fit into those pants. Oh, no. I sat down and I cried in the shop. I had never been that big. I wonder if people life. at shops, how many, how many people do they see crying? Too many, anyway. I'm sure. <laughs> I've, I'd never been that big in my life. Yeah. And then I went to get a size 44. Yeah, I can hand. And then I took it because I needed clothes for work. And I sat down with, with Savelle and I'm like, I don't know what you are choosing to do. But... This mm. is now my journey that I'm starting now yeah. because I cannot be in a position where I don't fit in clothes. Mm. Or oh, the clothes you. that I used to fit in. Yes. Because that, that means half your old robe doesn't it fit you doesn't, anymore. You know, yes. I'm like, I refuse. I'm not, I'm, this is not going to be me. And then that's when I started my health journey and he joined me mm. and we went back. 
Jeez, man. <laughs> you know? And we went back and now we're getting even better than what we were when we got married. Yeah. And so that that is that is what I'm talking about, Tori, you know, and Lena, he used to, he he told me, he's like, Mutwak, you are getting big. And I'm like, but it, got up, it was a joke between yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. But it's been a year, mm. you know? And then it, it got to, to a point where by Lena, because whatever I ate, he would eat. And then... Um, you would eat together. One tall. You would share a plate. <laughs> you would get exactly. dessert and like, let's do it and together. And he would read like, <laughs> uh, kind of TV, so it's like he's snoring. And I'm yeah. like, I'm my guy. We need to we need to change something. <laughs> change. But those are the kind of candid conversations that can only be developed if you learn to be comfortable around each other and have that conversation. I think people struggle to get comfortable around each other. Yeah. I think it's a, uh, you can't fart next to me. Uh, you can't say I'm going, you, 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 you said it. <laughs> Some people don't, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Getting comfortable around each other is hard, as it mm. seems. Because you have to be comfortable to have difficult conversations. Yeah. Comfortable enough to have them often enough that they are not difficult, difficult anymore. Mm. And that seems to be a challenge that a lot of it people is. have. It is. We, we're talking about changes. Mm. People will change. Uh, that's guaranteed. Yes. Physical changes will happen. You're no longer Miss South Africa. Uh, or you are in my world, yeah. uh, but you're no longer. There's a new one as well. You're not the reigning yes. <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> uh, and, and there's a lot that has changed. But surely in our parts, as we're changing together, mm. we must find new things that keeps this thing interesting. Yes. There must be an evolution of mind as well. That, that, that It used to be the way you look. Now it's the way your mind works. Mm. Or it's always been the way you look and the way your mind works. And with time, your looks are, maybe someone will, will appreciate them mm. as much. But to me, I, it's wallpaper. I see it every day. Mm. What happens in a scenario like that where do, do, do we stay, should we be staying attracted to each other forever? I think we should though. But I anyway. think you should. <laughs> now imagine, you know, getting intimate and you're not attracted to the person that you're getting intimate with. It's How is that going to work? I don't I don't know. I don't think it, it is I don't think it's feasible that you should not be attracted to your partner, you know, physically. The emotional and the mental things is an everyday conversation and, and, and all of that, you know. But if you're going to be doing um foreplay, not just in the bedroom, throughout the day when you he's there and you're all day, sorts of things, yeah. It shouldn't be the mental picture of day one. Because we need that to move person past is gone. day one. Mm, that person is gone. It should be the mental picture that you have of this person currently. Mm. So that as you're going through the day and you're thinking about them and whatnot, you're going, mm, yeah, mm. you know, I this is just me. Yes. You know? It, it sounds more like it should be <laughs> all of us. <laughs> you know? That's what I believe. It should, it should constantly be there. That's why I think I work on myself to make sure that when I look myself in the mirror, I look attractive in my own eyes. Yeah. If I look attractive in my eyes, surely, if not David or somebody else, we're going to well, see, like, huh, this chick. You doesn't know, look so bad. You know, therefore, it would mean that my partner also sees that too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you want him to, or her to continue looking that uh, in your eyes, yes. work on you to make sure you look that uh, in your own eyes. Do, do we, we, I spoke earlier. I said, uh, <laughs> if you really want to gain weight, get married. Uh, does it, that change, should we prime our minds to accepting that we will change? Yes. Is it necessary it or we just, just live life and let, when it happens, it happens? Or should we just say, I'm aware that my person is not going to be the same, that when she's 30, she won't be the same as when she was 20 and yeah. so forth and so forth. It's inevitable. You will never remain a size 32 mm. or a size whatever. Mm. It's not even just about the weight and weight gain no, of course, or loss. Yeah. But everything about this person grows and, and, the, and they change. So you cannot mentally still have that young person in your head. It's inevitable. You are not the same David you were 30 minutes ago. No. You really are not. Yeah. You know, whether it is mentally, physically, emotionally, whatever, you are not. So it cannot be expected that within 10 years of marriage, I am still the same person. Jeez. The likes that I had back then are not the same now. The ambitions I had back then have changed. The 
attraction, the thing that attracted to me before, attracted yes. me to you before, have changed completely. I found something else completely different about you now that I that you know drives me crazy, you know that that I love. That is what change means, and we need to be um, flexible enough to change with each other. Let's go back to to, to a, the basic concept of divorce that speaks of. I just changed my mind. Because changing my mind is part of the very change you're talking about. Yeah. Have we found ourselves in a situation where the relationship is okay, but but they drifted apart? Mm. You know, they're no longer, they don't have the same interests anymore. I am 39, 40, and I now like something else altogether. Mm. Surely that... Is that is that what they call irreconcilable differences? Mm. Is that what it is? What <laughs> sometimes that's exactly what it is. That it's not they're not even fighting. No, they're not mad at each other. Nothing. It's just I know it's not working. I don't look forward to to coming home to you. No, I don't look forward to having a conversation with you in that rela- in that area of our of our lives. And you'd find that throughout the day they're chatting as friends, and, and they're, they're having fun. Yes. But when it comes home to actually having that a marriage, it's not <laughs> working. And you know it's okay. You know, I guess eh? it's okay. It happens. And most divorces that I deal with that are like that are very easy. They're very, very easy. No one is fighting anyone. It's just a matter of, okay, it's not working. Let's just... Kishab. Yeah, kishab. Let's just part ways. And they end up remaining very great friends yeah. after that. But the relationship part doesn't exist. It's no longer there. Because, yeah. I, cause I, you know, while we're talking about change, I, I, I realize how simple it is for people to just grow apart. Mm. Like, really, really, I used to love you with all my heart. Mm. Eh. <laughs> I'm no longer there. Yeah. And yeah. it has nothing to do with anybody outside. No. It has nothing to do with me looking forward to hanging out with you. Because remember, when you're in a marriage, I imagine, you are you, you your dreams collide and mm. become one. Mm. And we dream big together. And I don't want to share my dreams with you anymore. When I see my dreams... You're not there. I don't see you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I always, I, I think it goes back to what we always go back to when we talk, you and I, communication. Mm-hmm. If we, if I'm not able to be your friend as well as your lover, we're going to lose it somewhere, you know. I should be able to be so silly with you that I can see the changes because the jokes we shared 10 years ago. Are They're not no longer same. funny anymore. You know, we, yeah. we, we have to, we, Evolve. we're, we're evolving, you know. Mm. And if I'm not evolving together, that's where the drifting apart Becomes, happens. Yeah. And if only one party is trying to, come on, come here, it's not going to work. It's like kids. They don't like playing together anymore. There's nothing you can do nothing about it. Nothing you can do about it. 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 The know? parents met, the parents became friends. Mm. Automatically, we assume kids will be friends. It's not they the were case. friends in the beginning, but... Uh, Hey, you know, not that interesting and anymore. And because they're not growing together. Remember, we only meet once in six months. Exactly. So they don't have the same interest. Six not months is all. a long time for yeah. things to, to, to happen. Jeez. So that is basically, I think, what you need to Drifting do. Drifting apart. Hey. Concept of irreconcilable difference. It always sounds like the most common reason people divorce. And I use the word reason. Mm. But is it just a legal term that represents a thousand, hundred thousand things. That's the one. Yeah. It's a legal term to just cover everything. Because imagine how long the summons is going to be, the particulars of claim. If we were to write... It's too much. Every detail. Yeah, no, it's too <laughs> it's, so it's a lawyer's shortcut. Yeah, no, it's, it's like no <laughs> irreconcilable differences. And if necessary, if the court wants to ask in, in, in the proceedings, what are those the differences? differences? Does it, do they ever ask? They do. They, the, the questions they also ask, have you tried to, to, to reconcile the marriage? Have you tried to go to therapy? Have you tried to make this thing work? These are questions asked the plaintiff, the one who's actually... Divorcing. Yes. Yeah. They are asked of the plaintiff. And, you know, and if the court is not satisfied that you tried everything, some courts actually say, no, you know what? We're not going to grant you this divorce. Please go try and... Please go try. Wow. Please go try. It's happened before. But why would a court want me to stay married to you? I'm done here. It's court day and trial. 
<laughs> done. I can't believe the court doesn't want to give me my divorce. Yeah, yeah. And it ha- you say it happens. It happens. It happens. Some magistrates or, or judges, they'll be like, uh-uh, no, no, this divorce. I wonder what happens in the, in the, in the judge's mind in that moment to say... I wonder, um, but <laughs> usually when it's a settle a settlement one, which is unopposed, they do ask those questions, and you know, it, life goes on. But recently, um, on this lawyers group that I I am in, mm. this one attorney was frustrated and said, "There's a settlement agreement. Both parties are there." All the relevant questions were asked, and then the magistrate refused to give a divorce Ooh. and said that, um, "What was it?" Some something along the lines of the of the pension funds that they they shouldn't pay them out or whatever you know and then we were also flustered going how what's going the on with the judge agreement, why are you now trying to impose or, or force your ideas or thoughts or whatever on, on the this parties? thing yes this is what they agreed on what are you doing as a as a, as a future judge <laughs> what do you think he's doing or she's doing. I think I would have to see what the paperwork said. Okay, yeah. So that I that, know. That, that swayed. Hey, that swayed him or her to say, Mm-mm, we're not going this route. Go fix this or do it the way I want first before I can grant you how, this divorce. How hostile slash entertaining is a divorce court? <laughs> Um, if it's uh, if it's unopposed, it's not very entertaining. Okay. It's 10 minutes, you're out. In and out, yeah. yes. Trials. Yes. <laughs> things that come out in trials oh. you sit there going you know <laughs> because it ends up being opposed right maybe um, let's say in the particulars of claim in the summons things like adultery uh, I mentioned in. in there or thefts or yeah. all sorts of things there's so many things that come out as a reason for divorce mm. and now uh, when you now oppose that you say you then uh, do your counter and uh, counter claim and you attack all of those things, like no, 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 I didn't steal. What happened is I now you have to you have to is. break down that that those events. Even. Yes, now you have to go for trial, and then now you have to explain. And you said I should put cameras like, in a divorce court. <laughs> said they're going. What people do this? Wow. What you know? I I know of a story where uh, I'll try to remember it as clear as I can because it's a it's it's somebody told me they were in divorce court and they said yeah it was fun today yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were going through their own divorce and yeah. their issues were relatively easy but you have to wait yes. for other cases mm. until yours come and and I remember she was saying um, it's this uh, 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 colored uh, couple and uh, they, it it seems like they spoke and they agreed mm. that it's uh, we're good to to part ways mm. uh, when they get to court. The guy is no longer interested in that agreement. Uh, he wants to to oppose. Oh no! And and this woman is saying, "Do you want me to tell them? <laughs> Do you want me to tell them about things you have hidden?" Yeah. He's <laughs> like, "Oh no, no, it's fine, it's fine." <laughs> <laughs> so I imagine it's such a threat because now your story will be revealed at yes, some point. Yes. Yes. So that's why people. Always opt for an unopposed settler so that things don't go out. We remain with whatever little information that is there. We leave. Because when you're married, a lot your secrets lot become things, my secrets. P- pillow talk. Pillow yeah. talk will come out in court. Let's talk about cheating. Yeah. Is it in my little brain? It seems like it will be one of the most common reasons. Yeah, it it has been um, cheating and money. Uh, yeah. Be it uh, money not coming home, be it money going to family members, and not course, yeah. know, all of that. But cheating has is quite most likely the number one reason for for divorces. My my logic tells me that men react even harder. Yeah, they struggle more. Yes, with cheating than women do. Yes, it, it, tell me what you think. So what we've what I've noticed is that when the wife is the one who has, who who has cheated, cheated yeah. um, husband can never get his mind over that. Mm. Uh, my mom once told me a story. You know, when you get older, your mom tells you That's things. That's giving you, know, you stuff. <laughs> she told me a story about a friend of hers that uh, their friend mm. ended up cheating Mm -hmm. the the, the woman yeah the woman cheated and the husband found out and forgave and all of that and then the marriage continued five years later 
during an intimate moment, um, the husband remembered remembered all of this and started asking <laughs> his wife while he was be- so is this what you were doing is this what you were doing and unfortunately it didn't end so good because he he actually strangled her to death ooh you know during during yeah, that moment yeah. you know and that is that is what i'm seeing because I, I don't know the, the male psyche, what it does oh. to that. I, I really don't know. But it seems to be something that they cannot get past, you know, mm. or get over. It would rather be, it can be anything. Yeah. Just don't, just don't cheat on me, you know? Yo, that's crazy. Yeah. And because and, that's my observation as well, that men suffer with, cheating mm. not that women don't yeah but don't don't get me wrong i would have to be a woman for a few months to to tell you the experience yeah. properly but i realized that men it's not something that it's easy to reconcile yeah and and but then in that case i don't imagine a man bringing coming forward and saying that's the ego talking mm. that i'm leaving because she cheated mm. but it seems like women are likely to do that yeah women are likely to say you know that only two things or only one thing that'll make me uh, leave him mm. it's if he cheats mm. it sounds like women find it easy to live in that world of of should he, he cheats i'm leaving mm. but men we struggle with it mm. i don't even know how some men deal with it frankly mm. god it's never easy mm. i broke off a relationship because there was cheating in the in the in i suspected cheating let me put yeah. it on record there was suspected cheating yeah. you know that was never quite verified but there was enough evidence to suggest that it was there mm. and I, and i i till today it it still haunts me yeah so it's clearly not easy for 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 me, for men to overcome this what are solutions <laughs> I'm not sure what the solution would be in yeah. that, in that How scenario. do women deal with it? Women, I think going back to how we started this conversation, yeah, yeah, begezel. Uh, it stems from all of that. You begezel and forget. No, I don't yes, I don't <laughs> think it's possible to forget. Forget. You know? But saying yeah, what does that mean? Uh, so to set, to set, set <laughs> what is Mkopu again? Pumpkin. A, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So you know the pumpkin leaves, you will find them oh, yeah, every day spread. 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 So that's basically what it means. So he's entitled to go here, there, and everywhere. They kind of give that Men. mental thing. Mm. It's guaranteed at some stage. Mm. And then you hear saying, Hi, as long as he, as he respects me enough for me not to find out. Women do say that. You know? And then... We don't have any of those sayings no. on this side. No. <laughs> nah, not even one. Not even, you know? <laughs> so those are the things. So people, so women, you know, weigh their options. And also finances. Mm, mm. Be as, I can be as successful as I want to be. A number, a good number of times, the man is always going to be financially stronger mm, than me, mm. right? Is that your observation? That's is my observation. Even that as so well. now women are considering, if I leave because he cheated, Yo. how am I now going to maintain my lifestyle? How am I going to, how am I going to? There's so many questions that, that come with, with it. Yeah. And then some women end up going, you know what? It's fine. Uchitile, let's forgive. The next time I won't forgive because now they didn't. We go back to the first conversation that we had last last time, whereby now women now start putting a contingency plan aside, putting money aside in the event. It's 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 now rainy, rainy day, my rainy day, day. not our rainy. Yes, because Kiboni has the potential. Excuse me to, to leave me. So now let me make sure that I am I am sorted now. So that when it happens again, I'm ready this time. It, it, it also speaks to uh, women leave you way before they leave you. Yeah. <laughs> it speaks to that as yeah. well. Yeah. Where now I know, I know, I know enough to start planning an mm. exit. You know, mm. Women have an exit plan. Yeah. Accountability, is it something that you find in, in some of the clients you deal with, struggle with? Hore, I did it. I was wrong. Uh, I apologize. Or they stay adamant to saying whatever you want to do. I think it is um, accountability in the sense, yeah, not looking at your own toxic. Or your own self. You know, you can admit that you were wrong, but mm. really not understand the impact it had on the other party. Mm. I know it was wrong. 
that is not acknowledging <laughs> the feeling that that, that p- other person the is, scar is, hey, that you you are leaving yes that is the accountability that i myself i'm not saying i cheated please no yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the accountability that i myself had to learn mm. you know to say you know what this thing has been raised so many times and i've dismissed actually, it actually you made reference to yeah. something like that even last time we spoke where yeah. you say you you don't only acknowledge it and move on mm. you have to almost pause and see it from their side from the other side as well mm. that's, that's that's where the real the real solving of the problem mm. is so that you can at least even though you won't understand the pain but you can so when you step back you can feel it i don't know how else no, to no, put absolutely. it you know and then you be able to go like okay no i i see it now i i i messed up askis and then that's it. That's all that needs to be done. I guess it's the remorse they speak of mm. in court. Mm. But you say, but I was just quiet. And they say, I don't show remorse. Mm. It's, there, there must be something that the entire environment tells yes. that he gets it. Mm. He gets what he did. Yeah. That is that is the accountability I yeah. feel should be. It's It doesn't stop at accepting and admitting. Mm. It adds, adds more to it. Mm. Red flags. Mm. Red flags sound easy as a concept. Some of the most common red flags. Early on in Rajola. And I really dig you. I think we're going far. I can already tell, right? Motokwak. Mm. Red flag number one that crosses your mind. What do you see? Oof. Um, from a girl's point of view. Because I imagine they will be different. You know, let me answer it this way. I watched Steve Harvey. What, you know those TikTok things recently and then he asked these women like why are you collecting red flags because what you went through with this wo- with this man is not what you go through with this guy it'll be a different flag it'll be a completely different <laughs> flag so deal with whatever that happened there move on so when you come here whatever he does it's on him not based on the past other flags and the past cannot necessarily mean the relationships uh, uh, of the past with other men your own childhood traumas because of lack of one two three four now appear in this man as a form of red flag having said that for me i think the the, the red flags as i was uh drawing, it would be you're not giving me time uh-huh. My my love language is time. Uh-huh. So if I if I would like to, and I don't necessarily need you here all the time, you know, but give me time. Let's have nice conversations. Let's hang out. Mm. Let let me just pass out on your lap. Yes, or you in know? your immediate presence. In, you know, yes. you, you can even leave me sleeping. How that I'm on is fine. For me, those would be the things that you are not spending time with me. But but I like how you say it for you because. That's a red flag for you. Yeah. Somebody else, leave me alone. Yes. <laughs> Don't he's, talk to me. He's always here. Hey. And then that's, the, that's their red flag. Yeah. It all comes down really to how we experience our life experience. Yes. How do we enjoy it? How do we want to have it? Mm. And that's, that's why red flags will, will never be the same. Yeah. However, they're still fundamentals. Mm. Religion is a fundamental. Definitely. Where our differences are so far apart. Yeah. Some some differences that cannot be reconciled. That you can love each other to the moon and back. But if the, if the religion is very important to a lot of people. Mm. So if you're not willing to convert to be Christian or convert to be Muslim or anything, we cannot make this relationship work because I'm not willing to leave my religion yeah. and remember most of the time it's women that need to leave their religion and join the husband because of what we spoke of earlier yes. we married you into this family yes. and if she's not willing to leave what she knows to come and join this side how is it going to work when we're building this house together you know, some people have made it work. I don't know how, but yo, kudos to them. Um, the kids practice both religions and it seems to be working for the family unit. But some people, it does not work. Harjola, mm. there's a lot of things we'll pick up from each other that we don't like. Mm. Uh, some of them will look at them as red flags and some of them, I'm hoping I'll change that person. I get, mm. uh, he doesn't give me time as an example you used. And I'll, Make him aware that I'm the time type of girl. Mm. Um, Mari, there are some red flags that... Are there red flags that you can see? Eh, 
it's an unchangeable, unnegotiable red flag. He just loves women, as an example. Yeah. Or she just likes men, for mm. that matter. Or, 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 you know, all of that. Or, mm. or, what, <laughs> I have to give the other side yeah. as well. Uh, so, so, give me a, your sense with regards to the concept of red flags from your perspective and what you've noticed. Because I imagine you've had clients who walk in and say, the red flags were there. The poor people just didn't notice them. Mm. Both of them. Mm. What have you seen? Um, I think the the one a, a mostly common is that communication with the opposite sex didn't okay. die down. You know, uh, there were too many girlfriends, mm. and you know, I knew about three. That one I knew from high school. They were friends and whatnot. All of that. But then there's this, there's this, and Tabi saying here, then Tabi saying there. Permanently, we are here. When we are talking, this is the situation. <laughs> and then there's messages from all these girls all the time. And when I I confront, it is a it, it blows up. As a defense. Yes, a, a yeah. whole defense. No, but you know, I have friends who are girls and all of that. And then um being too closed off. I don't want to say private. Mm-hmm. Being closed off. Is that a red flag? It is a red flag because <laughs> um you are Anything that you do, I'm not even permitted to ask you about it. Mm. Be it as little as how was your day at work. It is not a platform for me to, I, I don't have the privilege to ask, to ask all of those things. I should know my place. Being told to know your place at all times. Yeah. But you are supposedly in a partnership in, in, in a marriage. I don't imagine any woman being okay with, with no. that. Or men for that um, matter. Yeah. Yeah, but it happens so much that people, parties know that I, I, I knew I shouldn't ask these questions, and then they'll be like, they come with a big blue eye. Yes, and like no, it's because I, I asked, asked this question, question I wasn't I supposed I to ask. Have. Yeah. So, so you're saying you can never have a relationship where there are questions you can't ask. This in is, simple terms. Yeah, this is me. You should be able to ask anything and everything. And if it makes the other party uncomfortable, there should be a reason why. And then you should know in future not to go there because it triggers something. Other things, know? yeah. And then that place is a no-go area, but at least you'd have understanding. But being in a position that, no, how not together, not even this small. Yes. Talk to me about and, and and there are people who find themselves in those relationships, yes. I imagine. Yes. It's one of the toxic relationships. Yes. It's one of the Yeah. It's not like it's a <laughs> I live in a world where I don't know what is a toxic relationship. And also it also with the financial dynamics. Yes. Oh yes, of course. It doesn't matter if it's the male or the female. If it's the female in that position, you don't have a right to question me. Who are you? With, with and, Yeah, with with women who have gotten more and more money over time. As, as society would, we, yeah. we know, with all sorts of things and uh, equal opportunity and so forth. Mm-hmm. Do we see dynamics that change also in how relationships work out? Yeah. Um, m- most women who are financially stronger than their partner tend to say that they cannot make the relationship last longer or get married because the 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 saying is that the man gets intimidated or belittled. By, by the this, woman yeah. or feels belittled that they cannot provide. I was listening to Miles Monroe, mm, mm. some tape that he made, I don't even know when. And he said that in the in the nineteen sixties, um, the man's role mm. was to provide. You were a man because you could provide. You provided a home, food, shelter, all of that. That's it. And as time progressed, women started to be able to get those things for themselves. themselves. Yeah. And now the question that remained for the man was, what is my purpose now in your life as, as a woman? Because you say, I can give you a house. No, I've got that. I can give you a car. I have that. And all of that. And then... Now the man, this is Miles Monroe, he's mm. saying, now the man turned to one thing that he knew a woman cannot have, which is physical strength. And this is when abuse became, that became thrive, um, yeah. higher and higher. Because now if I can't provide for you to take care of you, I will show you that I am a man. And this is where they start hurting you. I, are you saying, and with Miles' uh, uh, logic in mind, that even even the most logical well-grounded guy is likely to find that moment slightly wobbly when he's fine normally 
because he's able to he, he earns 1000 rand you earn 200 rand mm. he's okay yeah until this tips it might even affect a guy who thinks he's okay most probably yeah. i think so um i could be yeah, very wrong of course. of course but um i think uh there's this the status update several ones put up and says i don't know where, <laughs> i don't know where washing powder is in my house i don't know where the iron is and i don't even know how to work the washing machine and i am married to a professional woman and he says i'm spoiled i think mm. because of that the way i i was raised i was not raised and remember 50 50 was a thing in the 90s when we mm. were kids mm. and then um my 50 50 doesn't exist in in my in my opinion there are things that i expect him to do and if he doesn't do them who is who does he expect is going to do <sighs> and the same for me i know what my role is in the house when we're in the office i will boss up thing. i will work yes. i will do my part but when we get home i put on the hat of being a wife wife and, and a mother being a mother yeah. and then i do the things that need to get done you know as a wife and a, as a wife and a mother yeah. so i think once we understand that we can both bring home the bacon but when we get home the roles should still remain exactly the way that they are i'm not mm. saying gender roles cleaning and cooking no, no just, i'm saying understand that in order for you to feel loved and wanted as a wife know what it is that you need to do mm. and you to feel loved and wanted as a husband know what it is that you need to do do people change you said you said you know transitioning or changing converting to this and that do people change you know, one thing i've learned and this has to do with my teeth as well for the first time i acknowledge that i have braces yeah. cuz i notice people comment about it as yeah. well um my teeth are crooked mm. i got it for my mom I, i grew up like that i accepted it. it was the way my teeth were nothing to it really there was absolutely nothing wrong mm. until when when i was at varsity uh my mom said you know you, you're not using this medical aid that's mm. what happened like, okay let me do this there's an orthodontist very close to where i lived actually literally a, a, a two minute walk from where i lived and i said let me just go to this orthodontist and we did the braces thing when i finished varsity i came back home mm. uh with braces still mm. and i remember i took them off literally a month after that cuz mm. like i get things in out degree why would i have these things and then my teeth were fine for a long 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 time mm. and then suddenly i started noticing that they came back because yeah. i wasn't using my retainers yeah. i wasn't putting the retainers i retained the shape that's how i put braces on again eh, i could have just left them it's old age i grow but one thing i learned from that entire experience is that you can change it all you want it always bends back to its original formation mm. that was created by god for mm. that matter and I, i and it brings me to this this very long statement brings me to this do people change because now we are change we're saying what a change women have a tendency of saying get la mo change mm. i know we don't get caught up in that at all yeah uh, do people change um i think at the core of it no whatever it is that you developed as you at the core of it you don't change mm. i think you learn to adapt to your surroundings and time and the way you grow up and mm. all of that um i feel hurry the concept ya hore ke tla tshintsha monna it doesn't work the 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 guy will in quotes change or adapt to whatever it is you as the woman bring to the table or oh, your want or oh, your want yes. because he wants you in his life but at the core of it i don't think he will change if in ele motho ya thotseng and ole rata like me cuz wow i talk mm. you know and then yena he is the quiet type he will adapt to a certain extent but loena don't be so oblivious to not realize or recognize that, that person has adjusted a, you know so you need to know that when he he or she is in their quiet times leave them be yeah just leave them be don't talk don't what it took me a while because i like i said i am i i mm. talk from the morning <laughs> there's already the second i wake up umo. you know i'm that person yeah. and i didn't understand why in the morning it's you know <laughs> and you know with with time i learned to get it that in the morning i i sneak out of mm. the room 
and I leave him be. And then I go. I'll make my noise. Yeah. And whatnot. How I feel like I continue with, with life. He has since adapted, mm. but he still has his quiet moments. Mm. And when he goes into that zone, you can feel it when he goes into that zone. Oh, go on. I get it. Everything I is it. fine. It's fine. Because then it's easy to also feel uneasy yes. about those quiet yes. like yo what have I Anything. done yes mm. it's easy to just be worried about yeah, it yeah and it's really nothing that you have done it's just at the core of it this person Uchena and therefore just you know adapt to, yeah. to, to that part as well it's such a an interesting thing about about uh, how knowing the person because it takes years to know there's a whole song written on the subject take time to know her Cape Town is nowhere remember <laughs> there you go Cape Town is nowhere <laughs> exactly that yeah, song yeah because it takes a lifetime to even adapt to this person yeah because I, I sit here and I, I wear your hat for a second and I say we have to take each other along mm. in this journey of, of discovering one another yeah. and if we're able to have a conversation with each other and we share a purpose mm. of whatever life that we want to create together it'll be easy for us to say don't worry man when I'm quiet I'm fine yeah. I, there's nothing I'm just that guy mm. who has these moments Yo, yeah. I think the biggest uh, mess we should blame to uh, the creator this could have been easier he could have made one gender. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that. <laughs> one gender, we're good. <laughs> well, that wouldn't have been fun. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's something entertaining about us being confused with each other. <laughs> you know, we we never get through life. Uh, somebody said if if uh, the apple was offered to a man, he wouldn't have taken it. <laughs> I don't know how true. I that agree. Is. Maybe <laughs> I don't know how true that mm. is. Women, I'm not blaming you guys for taking the apple. So, but uh, that's that's our story today, man. Yeah. I think it's always so much fun talking to you about these. You become some kind of a relationship. Where one of these days we'll do it live with an audience. You know, somebody and said we'll that bring, we'll bring some. We'll bring whoever that you feel should be a part of this yeah. as well, and we'll just do it live. We'll set up a proper date, and so there's enough audiences. Yeah. People are aware of it, and we'll talk the law. We'll talk relationships, and we'll talk other law yeah. stuff, uh, including. Um, Criminal law, which seems to be one of your favorites. Yeah. And why do you like it? it? It is not messy. You did say that. Actually, <laughs> you did say that. It is not messy. It's, 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 there's it's no clear. gray area. It's, it's here. You, know? chile. Yeah, you it's stole. This, yeah. That's it. It's highly labor. It's either it is unfair dismissal or it's not unfair dismissal. You know, it is either unfair labor practice or it's not. There's no murkiness there. It is. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bahait Sugen Tawi said to Bazan. Tell them uh, your website again www.dubazanatennis.co.za or info info at dubazanatennis.co.za I know you have problems I know and you don't want to admit <laughs> and you keep postponing your problems you're thinking one morning you'll wake up and they'll be gone that's what all of us think about ESCOM <laughs> 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 so we hope one morning we'll wake up and the whole problem will be gone so reach out to uh, Ntabi Sema Heights thank you so much man thank you it's grand King King David Studio Podcast.